Three Reality Space Pie Film and Dryers. But which one is the best for your needs? Well, let's try to answer that question. Welcome to my tech farm. I have here three filament dryers from the Creality, Space Pi, Space Pi Plus and X4. And I already did a review video about the Space Pi a few months ago. And these two boxes are sent to me by the Geek Buying, so I can present all three filament dryers in one video. There is no additional payment from their side, but this video and the whole channel is sponsored by Polymaker and by my Patreon supporters. Let's see a few specifications from the left side. Obviously, Space Pi is for one spool, plus for two spools, and X4 for four standard one kilogram spools, or uh, here we can insert uh, two two kilogram spools if their diameter is not bigger than 200 millimeters. In that case, the maximum width is 150 millimeters. In these two, <laughs> there is no official information, but I measured here the maximum width of the spool is uh, 77 millimeters approximately, or of course smaller. I can see only the price for me here in Europe, but I switched the currency to dollars, 67, 90 and 199 dollars. Or use PTC heater with a maximum power of 145, 260 and 360 watts. Now the maximum temperatures, this is important, 70, 70 and here the maximum temperature is 85 degrees Celsius. 70 degrees Celsius is enough for almost everything. Only nylon and PPS or similar materials require higher temperatures because on 70 degrees Celsius, recently I tried again, one day is not enough to dry the filament if it is full of moisture. So 85 degrees Celsius is important if you want to dry nylon or similar filaments. On the website, only for X4 I found that it has a flame retentant gray certificate. Other two, I'm not sure, maybe it is just not mentioned, but I couldn't find any information about this. So in all three cases, they use the PTC heater, which rotates the air inside, and this will result more equal heating of the spool. But still, it is not so perfect like if we would have the rotating of the spool. I just like to mention in every filament dryer, every video, maybe I will just motivate the manufacturers to integrate this functionality too. So with these two filament dryers, I will unbox them and then I will do my sponge drying test because this is what I do with all filament dryers and the results are comparable with each other, even with the space pi. And we will see what are the maximum temperatures inside, but also I'm following the relative humidity too. By the way, space pi has so great aesthetic design that my youngest daughter's toys spend inside more time than my filaments. It's a good filament dryer, but I have many others, so I can afford this. Okay, we're right, go on. Ahead. Just very quickly, why do we need a filament dryer at all? Well, filaments will absorb moisture from the air, and some filament types are more sensitive to this. For example, PTG, TPU, especially nylon. And I also noticed that all carbon fibers or glass fiber reinforced materials are sensitive to this, even if it is just the glass fiber ABS. How can we recognize this? Well, sometimes we can see a lot of stringing, sometimes we can hear popping sound from the nozzle, and uh, when it's stopped extruding, we can still see some oozing, because the micro water drops will boil inside and push out more materials. And this will have a negative effect on the surface quality. We can see very rough surface, that's because of that over extrusion. I have in a progress review of the BQ's core carbon fiber filaments and looks like they are not dried before the packaging and you will see how it looks like before and after drying. Huge difference. It's time for the unboxing. Space Pi Plus and Space Pi X4. The Plus arrived with a two-wire power cable and some Teflon tubes and the X4, it arrived just with a power cable, there are no Teflon tubes included in the package. But at least this is three-wire power cable with the ground. On the Plus there is a sticker below the screen with a warning to hold the half seconds to power on and off. And on the X4, please upgrade the latest product firmware according to instructions in the user manual. Hmm, not too good news. From the bottom there is a slot for the TF card, so the firmware update should be very simple, just copy the file to the SD card and insert it here, power on and it should be done automatically, only it would be nice then to include one TF card in the package. Design of these two units is very similar, there is a screen, 
exit for the filament only in this direction and it is resealable doors some holes maybe exit for the moisture the doors rollers checking the maximal width of the spool is approximately 74 or 75 millimeters or one bigger spool if you place it in the middle space for the desiccant which is also included on two sides Actually, the single version don't have a dedicated space for the silica gel. This is the sensor for temperature and relative humidity. And on the plus, properly it's here. In both cases, this is the input of the hot air and it goes around and exits here. This means it will be a little bit harder to measure the temperature of the input air because my sensors will be somewhere here. Now about X4. This is completely different product. Uh, it has two chambers independent from each other. For example, here we can dry the nylon on 85 degrees Celsius and here let's say PTG on 60-65. I still don't like that it has only this exit for the filaments. And small correction, it also has four exits for the filament on the back side too. Now back to the video. And they should include some Teflon tube because some carbon fiber filaments will wear out this plastic very quickly. So even if you don't want to connect completely with your printer, at least some shorter ones should be inserted here. There are no holes for the ventilation, but on the back side, it has one direction waves and the fans. So from time to time, it will let out the moisture here on the back side. So far, I could see this only on Bebo Lab AMS units and on DIY eye dryer. Very smart solution. Let's check it from the inside. Let's check it from the inside. I left this error in the video on the purpose to show you why I hate this sliding lock. Rollers are quite smooth and they rotate very easily. Yes. This is the fan to let out the moisture. And there is a desiccant with a warning. Please do not remove the desiccant. There is a silica gel inside and it doesn't have to be removed. It will be dried together with this hot air and during the storing it will reduce the moisture content inside. I also like this elastic sealing line. It's very good for the storing of the filament. If the animation on the website is correct, then this is the input of the hot air and it goes around and this is the exit. This means I cannot measure directly the temperature of the input hot air because uh, this will be the location of my sensors. Ah yes, an important detail. Okay. According to the website, it works in this active silent mode. This means when it reaches the temperature, it will reduce the fans. And with this, it reduces the noise too, which is extremely important for me. And I will measure this noise exactly in this state. It's time for my regular sponge drying test. This is for the cleaning of the soldering iron. And I will add 2 ml water to it. And I will measure its mass every half hours. But what is more important, during this one hour, I will measure the temperature and relative humidity. This is DHT22 sensor and I have one in the other unit too. And with the Erdogan Uno, I can see the results here, but also I can collect the data with my laptop. Now this is the input of the hot air. So this sensor will measure colder temperatures. So later I will try to measure somehow the input hot air, but for this, uh, the lid will be open partly. And this will be the location of the sponge, approximately in the center of the filament. And with X2, this will be the location of the sensor. And here you can see the location of the sponge. Interesting distance between these rollers are a little bit bigger compared to the plus version. Current temperature in this room is approximately 24 degrees Celsius and 41-42% relative humidity. Mass of the empty sponge. Adding 2 milliliters of water. 2.575. This is the second sponge. Again adding 2 ml of water. 2.6 on 1. And this can go into the dryer too. Pot set to maximum temperatures 70 degrees Celsius and 85. Now I notice that there is some LED inside. Nice. After 6 minutes approximately, the temperatures according to the earth sensor are 70 and 69 degrees Celsius. According to my sensors, it is 55 in both cases. 
Of course, I'm measuring the colder air temperature because my sensor is located on different position, but by time this should reach the set temperatures too. After approximately 20 minutes, I could hear that this fan is working now, so it is letting out the moisture. I hope we will see something on the measured data too. Both are relatively quiet machines, but I can measure the noise only when one is operating at a time. This is a time-lapse video measuring the mass of the sponge after 30 minutes. This sponge is dry even now after half hours. And a little bit off topic, I'm not sure who started to copy each other, but stop copying bad solutions. This candle is very bad because something similar I can see on sandal dryers too. This is not good solution. Just quick check what can you see through thermal camera. Backside. Front side. From the left. Measuring will be finished soon, one more time just to present the position of the sensors. So this is the circulation of the air, it is measuring the colder side. And that's the position of the second sensor, it's somewhere in the middle. And during this one hour, this is the fourth time I'm hearing this fan on the back side, letting out the moisture. I think this is correct method. Only I have the feeling that it is based on the timer and not based on measured relative humidity, which would be more corrected method, but this is good enough too. Time for the last measuring and also I'm turning off the heater. I hate this handle. Who invented this? This is completely dry. Zero point five twenty four. It was similar even after half hours. Now let's analyze the measured values, and I included here the data for the V one version. On this graph, here we can see the minutes, and this is or temperature, the top three lines, or the relative humidity, the bottom three lines. Let's analyze first these two lines, uh, these are plus and V1. Look how similar are the temperatures, but look how big difference is in relative humidity. And now you can see how important are those ventilation holes. On V1 we have one small, maybe one millimeter diameter hole. On the plus we have two, maybe four or five millimeter holes. X4 is completely different, it has that uh, fan. Now fortunately I couldn't really recognize here when was it enabled, maybe here or ones here, but basically these are very good values. Let's see the temperatures. These are the bulk temperatures and don't forget that I measured the colder side. And for X4, 82 degrees Celsius, which is good. And for the plus 65 and for V1, 63. Don't forget these two are set to 70 degrees Celsius and I am measuring the colder side. So overall, all three are quite accurate in this case. Sponge drying desk for these three filament dryers and this is a removed water after 30 minutes in percentage and this is presented here on the graph. Of course after one hour all three sponges are completely dried but with the X4 this is dried even after 30 minutes. Now here we can see some difference maybe because of the bigger volume drying on the plus was a little bit slower compared to the version 1. One more important experiment, I want to see if I set let's say 60 degrees Celsius, how much it will overshoot. The sensor is now exactly above the hot air which will touch the filament, and if I set 60 degrees Celsius, I don't want here to measure 70 or something like that. It's not so easy to insert here the filaments, the hole is smaller, but I think it should be okay. Because this is just a rubber, and this is that fitting, the plastic which we have to press down a little bit to insert the teflon tube. Typically we can see this on the printers, but the hole is smaller, so I have to split this cable to two. 60 degrees Celsius set in both cases, and I want to see what will be the temperature of the input air. According to their own sensor, 60 degrees Celsius in approximately two minutes, and here 59 degrees Celsius in three minutes. What I am measuring are 57 and 59 degrees Celsius, which is okay, but I'm curious what will be the stabilized temperature. As you can see the set and measure temperatures is 60 degrees Celsius in both cases. And on plus it is 65, the hotter temperature, which is on the edge of acceptable. 
and the x4 it is 62 which is very good only the plus is operating now 39 decibels which is not too loud x4 only 39 decibels one chamber is operating 40 41 decibels when both chambers are working Quick conclusions for the end. First two filament dryers are very similar. Same screen, same maximal temperature, same noise, very similar design. Only of course uh, this one is uh, bigger, so we can place inside two one kilogram spools. I already mentioned that uh, what I don't like in both cases, we have only this exit of the filament on the top and be careful with the set temperatures. Sometimes it may overshoot a little bit. And don't forget those 70 degrees Celsius are enough almost for everything for the consumers with the printer, PLA, PETG, ABS, uh, only for let's say nylon or some carbon fiber, PPS, PPA, we need a higher temperatures. And for this we have for example X4, which is completely different story. Maximal temperatures, 85 degrees Celsius and uh, letting out the humidity on the back side because here I forgot to mention that we have only two holes on the top and that's it. Of course with drying the filament we don't have so big amount of the moisture like with drying this sponge, but this is much better solution. And uh, only one thing I'm missing here, that's the rotating of the spool during the drying. In that case I wouldn't mind if overshoots let's say by 5 degrees Celsius that set temperature, of course it is better if it is accurate, and it is in this case. And my final recommendation, if I have to choose between these three and the size is not important, well, it's quite obvious if you need those 85 degrees Celsius and you are printing a lot with the technical filaments, definitely X4 is a great dryer. But for everything else, basically any of these two is enough. PLA, PTG, ABS and uh, actually which one depends on your needs. Do you need a bigger one or a single spool is enough. To Geekbind, thank you for sending these two products for the testing and review. And to all your others, if you have some other experience with these filaments, you know a few lines down in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video until the end and happy drying and printing.